Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for tuning in today for our talk by Mr. James Yao, the head of department for Department of Psychology at Help University. The topic is psychology in pandemic times. Now we're going through a very critical period. In fact, we have been doing this for more than a year now. Uh, it's been a very, very difficult, difficult time for many of us. How are we coping? How are we handling it? How is it for students? What's in it in your future for students? And what can a career in psychology do for you? The best place to come and find out is Help University. And the best person to answer your questions is Mr. James Yao, a senior lecturer and head for our faculty. So without further ado, the floor is yours, James. All right. Thank you, Raymond. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this uh, short talk on psychology in pandemic times. Uh, I would like all of you to try to be interactive, right? Or as it feels like I'm talking to myself. Um, but before that, is it okay for everybody to just show me your video camera so that I can have a, a sense of who my audience is just for maybe 10 seconds or so? Everybody's shy. <laughs> All right. I know some of you have uh, visited our booth earlier, right? In the morning and yesterday. Okay, I recognize some names over here. All right, so my first question is, uh, how are y'all feeling? It's almost one year since we had the MCO. Can you tell me some of your anxieties, some of your worries and some of the uh, issues that is bugging you right now. Would anybody like to switch on your microphone? Chloe, you've got something to ask, is it? Yeah, go ahead, Chloe, you can switch on your microphone. How about HSBO? <laughs> uh, okay, no question at the moment. Uh, hmm. Yeah, Listen for okay, all right. So I guess most of you are either parents or students who have just finished your A-levels, UEC, or uh, uh, perhaps uh, SBM trial exams. Huh? So this one whole year, we have been struggling with the pandemic. Uh, and I think one of the main questions that all of you might be having is, is psychology relevant during these pandemic times? Okay. Uh, how important you think psychology is, uh, the study of psychology, psychology research, and so forth. Right? So today's talk, we're going to talk about some, perhaps uh, some of the anxieties that we are having, uh, especially in terms of job prospects. At the end of the day, for most of you, you are interested in, in working in an area perhaps related to human interaction. Right? But psychology is such a big field, so many areas uh, in uh, many countries such as the US and UK, Australia, where the field is, uh, how to say, a very popular major uh, for a lot of students after their high school. There are many, many specializations within psychology. Of course, in Asia, especially Southeast Asia, it's a relatively new field, right? So we don't have that many universities in Malaysia offering psychology compared to like business, IT, and so forth. Uh, but uh, we can find that the number of students who are studying psychology is increasing year by year. Uh, so there's something about psychology that attracts people. Okay. Well, uh, I would like to introduce you the motto of our Department of Psychology is understanding minds and empowering lives. So it's not just understanding how the brain works, uh, but also to use that knowledge to go out and empower lives to go out and make a change, to go out you know, and change um, policies, for example, government policies, to change how work is being done, right? to influence people, to help people to train themselves, and so forth. All right. But before that, we need to know exactly what is psychology. So can I have a few of you to try to answer this question, either with your microphone on or you can type it out. 
anybody would like to just try to just give a shot what in your mind in your own definition uh, understanding uh, of human mind understanding of human minds specifically uh, behavior uh, or some 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 kind of uh, attitude problem or whatever you know yeah so behavior aspect is one yeah thank you i just leo um we have the what we call the formal definition if we teach our students in the first year right which is the science of human behavior as you mentioned just now and you also mentioned the mind right so that's mental processes so mental processes in psychology we call it cognition cognitive psychology or cognition deals with how we think how we make decisions you know how we pay attention all these are part of our mental processes human behavior will be things that we observe so it's very clear especially to our family members our friends or something that you can can see right but when we explain to other people to make it more simple i like to use this acronym called the fat acronym f a n t can anybody guess what does spend what are we interested in right now what was the first question I asked you just now when we first came in? So we are not just concerned about what happens inside, right? Uh, but we are interested in how people express their what? Feelings. Exactly. So it's a study of human feelings. Some people call it emotion, although there's some differences. But just for the layman, we'd say, okay. If you're studying psychology, we're interested in human beings' feelings. Are we all human beings, we've got all sorts of variety of feelings. And sometimes we're not even sure how do we exactly feel. Right? That's one aspect of psychology. The A will be, as you mentioned just now, human behavior. So these are the actions, right? So the things that are obvious to people outside, right? the aspect of behavior. And you also mentioned just now about the mind, the thinking processes, or what we call cognition. Uh, this will come under our thoughts, right? So we are interested in human beings, although sometimes we do study about animal psychology, but in general, we are interested in how human beings feel certain behave, uh, certain emotions, uh, how they act, why they act differently in front of different people, we act differently in front of parents, in front of peers, in front of our children, in front of our colleagues. Huh? And we are interested in the thinking processes and how we can think better, how we can think critically, now, these are the issues in general that we cover in a three-year psychology course, right? So first question you might be asking, if you are a student, is psychology for me? If you are a parent, you might be asking, is psychology the best career path for my son or my daughter? Now, these are the eight P's um, that I came up with. You probably can't, see, can't find this in any books, but over the years, I started off as a counselor. Uh, in 1998, uh, giving a lot of career counseling, giving a lot of talks in the field of career guidance. And over the years, I've uh, done a lot of research and found that these are the important factors, the important pathway uh, factors that you need to take into consideration. Uh, so if you'd like to write this down or snap a picture, go ahead. Okay. Now, what happens is in um, Malaysia, sorry, you got a question? Anybody? All right. So these are the eight things we need to think about. Mm -hmm. Number one is, the first question, the easy question is, what do you love doing? What is your passion? So if you are interested in studying psychology, you should be passionate about what? Anybody? What are some of your key passions? If you can list down three of your passions, the three things that you really, really love, you can't do without. What would that three things be? I'm asking the students here in the audience. Anybody? Do, have you ever thought about what are the things you really, really love doing? In psychology, we tend to say that you must have a passion for um, people, right? Yeah, but that is not necessarily so because there are some psychologists who don't deal with people on a day-to-day -day basis. And there are some researchers who are more, dealing more with data, dealing more with numbers rather than dealing with people. Huh? But if you know the answers to these questions, it'd be easier for you to find out 
which specialization in psychology would be suitable for you, right? So let's say you're very passionate about people. So there are a few careers within psychology which may be suitable for those who are very extroverted people, uh, those who like to, for example, listen to people's problems and uh, do counseling and all that. And there's certain types of people who are navigated towards those kind of jobs. There are some people who, are, as I said just now, uh, they are more in analytical skills. They are more interested in, in looking through data, uh, which is very important, right? In times of pandemic, I mean, we are bombarded with all kinds of data and we have to see and find out which of those data sets are reliable, okay, which of those data sets are scientific as well as made up, you know? So, so what kind of passions are there? If you can think about, you can write this down somewhere, Okay. What are you passionate about? Are you passionate about playing computer games? Are you passionate about food? Uh, are you passionate about you know, giving public speaking in front of others? And what do you really, really love doing? Because at the end of the day, you're going to spend right 30 years or so after you finish your degree in more or less a, a, a field where you should be passionate about. And the problem is nowadays, because jobs are scarce, a lot of people just take jobs that Okay, la, as long as it pays me a lot, uh, I'll go for it, right? So they do not know sometimes, you know, it's, it's not the salary that counts. It's not how much I get paid. But whether I go to work every day with that, that same passion I had, even before I stepped into university. And that is difficult to sustain. Right? That's why people do change jobs one after another. But it's good to think about this before you step into university. All right, number two would be potential. What are you good at? As you know, in psychology, especially in public university, we've got very stringent entry requirements, right? Specific subjects you need to have good grades, right? Therefore, it's not enough if you're passionate about something. You need to have particular, what we call intelligences. If you've heard about Gartner's theory of multiple intelligences, and some of us are intelligent in the music aspect. Some of people are intelligent in the mathematical aspect. Some people are intelligent in different, different areas, right? All of us smart, but we're smart in different areas. So it's good to list down what is your top three intelligences. Are you very good in numbers? Are you very good in performing in front of others? Are you very good in writing, right? So it's important to, to find this uh, overlap between your passions and your potential. Well, for example, a lot of people like to sing but they cannot sing in tune, for example, right? And they want to go in, uh, you know, Indonesian Idol, or Malaysian Idol, all these kind of competitions. They're so passionate about singing, but when you ask them to sing, they either don't sing in timing or in, in tune. Huh? So it's, it's important to make sure your passion and potential somehow mm, overlap with each other. But even then, even then, that's not enough. If you've got passion, you're very good in something, but what about your personality? There are some jobs, there are some careers within psychology where you need to have a certain type of personality. There are certain traits that you need to have. For example, you apply to our master's program, psychology. We have master's in counseling, and master's in clinical psychology, and master's in philosophy. And different types of master's, they require different types of personality. If you want to be a clinical psychologist, right? Are you a person who's very patient? Are you a person who's very resilient yourself, right? Or you're a person who don't like to mix around with other people so much, right? So we, you know, in a, even a master's program, it's even more stringent, it's more difficult, especially the clinical psychology program, right? Many students apply, even our own students apply. Sometimes we just need to reject them because although they have 4.0 CGPA, they got very, very good results from primary school, secondary school, even their degrees, you know, first class honors or whatever. But that doesn't guarantee that they, their, their personality might not be very suitable for that particular job as a clinical psychologist. So in the end, we have to say, sorry, we cannot take you in for the master's. Right? The same thing like counseling. Right? They also have a panel interview. Not everybody just pays money can just walk right into the program. Right? Because we want to see whether your personality fits the ethical and professional realm of counseling or clinical psychology. Okay, number four is priorities in life. You know, all of us got different priorities, right? Now, some of us, priority is uh, beauty. Some of us, it is 
helping other people. Some of us, family is number one. No matter what happens, our family must come first. Right? So you need to ask yourself, what are your priorities in life? What are the values in your life? Because if you find a job that clashes with your value, right, then it'd be very difficult. You'd be very stressed out. Uh, because, for example, if family is very important, but your job requires you to travel all the time. I have students whose parents only see them once a month because they're constantly traveling overseas, right, for different projects and so forth. And that would be quite difficult uh, to, 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 to balance between family life as well as your working life. Okay, so these are the four very important questions everybody should ask themselves, right? To ensure that you choose the right path, to ensure that you choose the right specialization within psychology. Yeah? Because psychology, we have uh, in the Asian region probably 20 different specializations. And I already mentioned clinical side, counseling side, but that's not all. There's so many more, uh, so many more that you can, can think about. And psychology is a very big field. Now, these four things are the things within yourself. There are some external factors as well, right? So passion, potential, personality, priorities is, yeah, I need to ask myself. There are four other things. The other four Ps are external to yourself. Okay? And what we are very interested in during these pandemic times is prospects, right? Now. Will I get a job? Because every day people are losing jobs, right? You know, there are bankruptcies filed, people getting unemployed. You know, people sent back to your home country, you know, all kinds of issues are happening on a daily basis because so many industries are closing down, right? And so many, even restaurants, I was just walking around for lunch, trying to look for food and say, oops, oh, uh, shifting out, you know, or that's, uh, they're going to end, uh, end their business very soon you know, because there are very few industries right now during pandemic times uh, that are making lots of money you know, with the exception of pharmaceutical and the medical line and a few others, uh, the glove making factory, that's fine. Huh? But there's so many people who are so worried about their job prospects in the next few months. So you want to ask yourself, if you are still a student, huh? in three years time, let's say you finish A levels of foundation, okay, what would be the job prospects then? Or if you want to go on to be a professional psychologist, you need at least a master, right? Master's in counseling, master's in clinical science. So maybe six years from now, what do you think the prospects would be? So you need to somehow do a lot of research and find out in a few years to come whether that particular job that now I'm so excited over uh, will, be, will be still there or not. Uh, or will it be taken over by robots? See, because of the fourth industrial revolution, you notice that some uh, industries are slowly disappearing because they're taking uh, they're being taken over by other new technologies. All right. Okay, next. Question is, what are the post-grad options? As I mentioned just now, of course, most of our students do not take postgraduate degrees. Uh, once they finish, they start working with their honors degree, right? The third year honors or some of them fourth year honors if they take the Flinders program that we have in partnership with Flinders University Australia, right? But there is usually 20 to 30 percent of students who are very interested in furthering their studies because they want to be a professional psychologist or licensed counselor or whatever. They do need to take a master's program. And you need to find out, you know, where in Malaysia or other countries do these very specific specializations. For example, uh, you want to be a forensic psychologist huh, or you want to be a health psychologist or you want to be an educational psychologist. Which um, institutions offer this? Uh, different types of postgraduate options, right? Because if not, uh, you will be just a, a person with an undergraduate degree. It does not mean that you won't find a job, uh, but there are certain jobs that you do need a master's and some jobs you do need even a PhD. Uh, for example, you want to be a professor at the university, you do, you do need to study 10 years of psychology, right? So one year in foundation, uh, three years to get an honors degree, two years to get a master's, and four to five years to get a PhD. So that's about 10, 11 years you know, before you enter a university as a lecturer and then become a senior lecturer and an associate professor and professor. So that's a long journey. Huh? Not that many people follow that journey, of course. All right, the second last one, of course, is a pay. Uh, everybody will be interested whether I can feed my family you know, with a career in psychology. 
depending on which area in psychology, some, some areas in psychology, some of our students, for example, they are working for NGOs, and of course, uh, they are NGOs that are very rich, they are NGOs that you know, rely on a lot of volunteers, right? So uh, for those people whose priority is not money, okay, their priority is to help as many people as possible, then, then fine, you know, even the job pays you a very minimal allowance every month, that is okay. Uh, but for some people, they want a lifestyle of luxury, a lifestyle where they can travel to, you know, uh, as many countries as possible after the pandemic. And therefore, they need to find a job where, uh, in terms of salary, uh, it is uh, not just paying high, but uh, there is stable income, right? And the last point here, point number eight, will be parental expectations. Some of you as parents, you probably have a very big company and you want to pass on the legacy uh, to your kids next time when you retire. Well, you need to communicate this to your children as well so that they study a field, for example, whether it's business psychology or they take more entrepreneurship classes so that when they graduate with a degree in psychology, they can be of benefit to your company and to carry on the legacy after you retire. Okay, so these are the eight P's. I make it easy. And just, just remember these eight P's. If you are thinking of choosing the best career, best specialization for yourself or for your kid. Unfortunately, in Malaysia, <laughs> um, counselors have found out, guidance counselors have found out, it's actually the opposite. Many students, when they come to our career talks, when they come for our open days and all that, Right. If the parent is there, the parents are the ones asking. Giving career talks and also, you know, being present in different education fairs. And I noticed 80% of the time, the parents are the ones asking questions and the children just follow along, right? So because the parents have got a set of expectations for my kid. Okay, I want my kid to study this. And second question would be what? As you can see, number seven there, how much, right? How much does this job pay? Okay. Third question would be, okay, let's see about your master's option. That's your postgraduate option. Number four, by the time my son or daughter graduate, got job or not, right? So the problem in Malaysia is we go upside down. We go from number eight to number one. Sometimes it doesn't even reach number five, four, three, two, one, right? Because Tendency is uh, we are just focused on the things that are external to ourselves, external to your son or daughter's own aspirations, right? So I hope by this 10 minutes so-called preaching or lecture, you're able to push it the other way around. Find up, ask, have a good, you know, heart to heart talk with your, with your child, your son or daughter. Find out about their passions. Help them develop their passions, the things that they're good at, their strengths, and their potential, right? help them to discover their personality at the career fair uh, and also in four days we have right, uh, so many types of different assessments mm, in the career sense boost if i'm not mistaken in the virtual info day there is a uh, personality test that was developed by some of my colleagues in career sense and i advise you to take it uh, although you say oh i know my personality i'm living with this personality for like uh, 18 20 years but you'll be surprised uh, because there are certain things that your parents can't see, your friends can't see, uh, your girlfriend or boyfriend can't see, um, uh, and you yourself do not know. Uh, there are some aspects of personality are hidden, and you need to discover that. If you can discover all those stuff, then you can answer these eight questions which I have for you. Okay. Uh, any questions so far? Can you please turn your microphone if you want to have a discussion with me now? Yeah, go ahead. I can't see the chat because I'm, I'm using full screen. Um, Raymond or Yazid, can you read out any uh, comments or questions by the parents or students? So yeah, far, none. So far, none. None? Okay. There are a few students here. Though. All right, sure. Yeah, students, do you have any questions regarding these eight points that I pointed out just now? Eunice says no. No, okay. 
carry on. Uh, All right, I'll carry on. Huh? So these are the questions you need to ask yourself. First, uh, write down and figure out uh, for all these different points, you need to do research. Uh, of course, well, usually for the first three, uh, your, what your, your, you have interest tests, you have intelligence tests, uh, and you have personality tests, and that one you can find out from our career guidance counselors, right? And the rest of it, you need to do some sort of a research. Uh. All right. Okay, I'll go on to the next slide, which is related anyhow. I go back to our point on job prospects. Now, every day you are hearing people losing their jobs and all that. Huh? So what is, what's so special about psychology? With a degree in psychology, am, am I at a disadvantage or am I at an advantage? Okay. It will go through some very popular careers uh, in the Southeast Asian region. Uh, although, uh, as I mentioned just now, in the United States, and there's many more specializations uh, in psychology. Uh, but the first one that our graduates tend to be very interested in this area that we call corporate training, consulting, and coaching, you know, because it sounds very glamorous, right? <laughs> And in Malaysia, there are, there are many corporate trainers, consultants, and coaches who right, do not have a master's or PhD. So you do, uh, if you're able to face the crowd, uh, if you're able to give public speaking and all that, um, there's so many opportunities like, for stress management. Right? This is a period of time where a lot of people are very stressed out. Right? So stress management trainings are, are ongoing. I was switching on page, Facebook this morning and I saw on some uh, stress management, so-called stress management gurus are giving training on stress management uh, and it covers many aspects, right? How to perform well in your job, how to motivate your staff, right? Conflict management, customer service, all these things are areas where a lot of our students are in after they finish the under, undergraduate degree. I also included in this area because it involves coaching, Right? It's not just mentoring people in companies, but also sports psychology. In Malaysia, there are very few uh, sports psychologists. Right? So sports psychology is an area where we train the mind. Right? So we help people to acquire skills, not, not by just physical training, but mental preparation, how to deal with group dynamics right? in group sports, leadership, teamwork. Personality, the right, having the right personality, having the right attitude, and you go for competitive sports and all this. Right? So, in many countries, they do hire lots and lots of sports psychologists. Uh, but unfortunately, in Malaysia, just a few. And there are some working in Bukit Jalan and so forth. So, this is an area which is sort of a lucrative area. Some corporate trainers, you know, just by working one day, you know, there's a one day, one day salary, right? Could be a few thousand uh, if. Of course, they are very good speakers. They are able to bring all their psychology knowledge and experience and help people deal with the issues in life. One of the top ones would be stress. Right? Okay, another big area that a lot of students who graduate with a degree, honors degree do is um, they get involved in child education and child care. And this is a big area in Malaysia as well. Uh, as you know now, there's a problem of some moms are working from home at, at the same time trying to, to deal with their kids. That's not very easy, right? But who are you going to send your kids to? Are you going to send your kids to people who do not have knowledge about child psychology, do not have knowledge about developmental psychology, right? So a lot of us, you know, if you're a parent, you will notice that how we, we uh, bring up our kids uh, are partly based on what we observe. Right, either in television or observe our own parents doing, and then we just okay by trial and error. Let's see, let's see how uh, So very few people do have specific knowledge in psychology in dealing with kids, especially dealing with kids who have special needs. Uh, so this is a big area. A lot of our students do hmm, work for early autism project and many companies that are giving very specialized um, training training and treatment to people who have learning disabilities, autism, Down syndrome, and so forth. And the number of kids with special needs are growing. The right? number of students with autism are also growing in our country right? because of several factors. Now, people getting married, 
much later, you know, all these other factors which are of better diagnosis uh, or more awareness. And therefore, there are so many centers for special needs that are opening in the Klang Valley in elsewhere. Right? Yeah, this is the area where if you think psychology, you say, okay, lah, psychology is for those people who want to help others who have serious psychological disorders uh, or who have a lot of conflicts in their marriage and family and so forth. Right? So as I mentioned, we do have a master's in clinical psychology and counseling psychology. Uh, and these are the areas, lah, family counseling, marital counseling, youth counseling, school counseling, uh, dealing with those with learning disabilities, drug rehabilitation, and counseling those who have uh, physical sexual abuse, working for religious organizations, and working for universe, uh, international organizations such as UNICEF, or working for uh, private or public hospitals as a clinical psychologist, or a counseling psychologist, okay, or doing community work. This is a big area where a lot of our master students who graduated in clinical or counseling psychology will specialize in one of these areas. Okay. So far, any questions on this? Anything else you want to know in detail? No. Okay, let's go on. So we also have uh, especially in Malaysia, right? a lot of uh, new colleges are coming up with uh, degrees related to either counselling or psychology. So there are, there's a great need in our area, in Southeast Asia and also in Malaysia, for people to work in academia, people to do lots and lots of psychology research. Psychology research is very important during the times of, during these pandemic times, right? We want to do lots of research. We want to get as much data as we can before we you know, change policies, before we know what, what to do. For example, uh, everybody's so excited about the vaccine rollout, right? Mm -hmm. but there are people who are not interested in the vaccines at all. They believe that the vaccines will cause more harm than good. So we need to find ways <laughs> through research on how to change people's minds, how to lay down the facts, right? To show them, you know, out of thousands of people who have taken this, this new vaccine and they came to several hospitals in Malaysia, how many percentage um, had reactions which are negative, for example, right? So there's a lot of research going around throughout the whole world just on COVID-19 issues, the psychological aspect of COVID-19, right? So other than that, other than doing research, uh, some university professors, uh, uh, of course, lecturers, mm -hmm. you also have tutors to do the tutorials, and some of them write books. And in fact, our dean is also writing a book related to well-being during these difficult COVID times. Right? So there's a lot of opportunities for this area in academia uh, right now, and also, uh, I'm sure, in the next few years to come. Right, another area as I mentioned just now, you know, it's important for every one of us to find out about our personality, our career options and all that. So we do have a lot of career guidance officers and all that who specialize in either creating new tests, coming up or developing new tests, personality tests, intelligence tests, interest tests, as well as interpreting. Not everybody can interpret, especially those that are used by clinical psychologists. You need to have a special license for that specific test alone. You need to be trained in that specific test. For example, MMPI-3 is a very specific test. And not anybody with a psychology degree can run the test and can interpret. You need to go for specialized training. And so some people specialize in testing, testing reliability and validity of particular tests. Okay. Related to that is recruitment. A lot of our students are working in HR companies. And they want to bring in the best people, hire the best. And of course, that's related to firing those who are not productive in that company, right? So whether it's a hiring, firing, a succession planning and all that, and that's a big area related to organizational psychology. And as I mentioned, it's not career guidance itself. is a very, very big field. Currently in public schools, we do have uh, about 
1,500 to 2,000 career guidance teachers as well as career guidance counselors. And they do need the knowledge of psychology, especially during these pandemic times where the number of jobs are decreasing, right? So in Help Me we have got various options. As some of you already know, you have already flipped through our e-brochure. Um, and uh, some of you have asked this morning in the past few days, you know, can I do a one plus two, two plus one, and so forth? The answer is yes. There are so many partner universities. Uh, but majority of students are doing a three-year honors degree. Uh, but a small percentage of them are doing a four-year honors, which is our Flinders program. The good thing is, in the past, some of the students who did a four years honors, blended honors program, they can go directly to a PhD program and skip the masters if they do very well in the four year honors program. Huh? But for 91% of our, our students, they are doing the three year honors program. Of course, before the first year at Help see you need to have either A levels foundation, you know, or, or one of those matriculation programs. Then after that, you know, a great majority would go straight to the working world. But those who have got the capabilities to do research, just the capabilities uh, or the personality, as well as capabilities and interest in the area of counseling and clinical psychology, they can do any of our master's program here itself in Health University. Right? There's also many options in many, many countries. A lot of universities, in fact, on a day-to-day -day basis, they write to me to um, to ask you know, how many of our students are interested in their university. So we do have a lot of partners, 30 of partners currently, where we uh, send students either for their master's or PhD, or a two plus one, one plus two, or one, one and a half point, 1.5 in 2.5, depending on um, where you want to go, right? So these are some of the options we have. So there are many partner universities uh, most students would prefer to go to UK, uh, do a two plus one degree with UK universities because you only need a one or one and a half years to finish up your master's after you finish up a degree in health university. Right? In Australia, they will recognize our Flinders program, our four-year honors program. So some students finish that and then go either directly to PhD, as I mentioned just now, or do a relevant master's program. So a lot of these partner universities are working very closely with us and they, they send us lectures to do guest lectures. They have research collaborations with some of my colleagues right? and there are many postgraduate opportunities. And a lot, I can tell you this, over the years, many of these partner universities are actually quite surprised because our students do very well. And many of our students who have graduated uh, either the final year overseas or finished their master's or PhD overseas, when they come back, they do come and tell us, you know, <laughs> Actually, uh, our preparation in Help University really helped them a lot. In fact, some of the subjects in Help University are even more tough. It's more, we have higher standards compared to uh, some of the universities overseas in this so-called more established universities. All right. So there's a lot more information and I don't want to bore you with a long talk. So I hope that you can uh, go to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash psychology H-E-L-P, or Instagram page. I'm sure some of you are the younger ones and would prefer to go to Instagram, site department.help. All right.